Hello and welcome everybody to the second Dev Diary since full development started on Elite Dangerous. Um, very, very exciting. Uh, teams really coming together now. We've got more and more people working on the game and we're moving towards lots and lots of new topics, some of which we'll touch on now. So, as with the previous Dev Diary, we're going to structure this around answering questions that have come up on the forums. So, I'll get cracking with that straight away. The first one is from Burned2K which is, will trade routes in Elite Dangerous have any continuity with the older games? Now this is an interesting question because it also throws up the issues with the galactic map. So um, the, the simple answer with, to some, is to some extent yes. But one of the things that I did in, the, in Frontier with the galactic map is to take as much real data but for practical reasons flatten the galaxy. Now unfortunately this brought a lot of real life stars closer to each other than they really are in real life. Now, um, that is slightly problematic, because not only is it, it, did it sort of, would it have moved their virtual position in the night sky, but, but also, I mean, it was, it was great for the game, because it meant a lot of real life stars were in the game. But we're not doing that now, we're returning to something that's um, a lot more closer to real life. So this will change some of the, the, um, the distances, and more importantly, it will change some of the trade routes. A lot of them it won't change, but some of them will change. But we'll do our best to get as much continuity as we can. Um, I, th I find the whole galactic map thing very interesting anyway, because um, as things have moved on, we now know of the positions at both more accurately and also a lot more uh, stars than we did um, back in around 1990, which when I, when I got all the data for the galactic map together. And I think it's important that we move with the times. So what's really interesting though is a lot of the planets that have been discovered since are already in Frontier, so that's something I'm very, very proud of if you like. So hopefully that answers uh, your question. So the next question is from uh, Soul Song, which is, the Milky Way has two small satellite galaxies, the Magellanic Clouds, will it be possible to travel there? So I'm afraid the answer for that is, is no, but if you look at our galaxy and look at the typical distances that you're, you're able to travel, if you imagine a, a full-size screenshot of the galaxy, even within one pixel the amount of travelling you do is, is prodigious. If you think how far people manage to travel in, in, in first encounters and in Frontier, um, it was absolutely tiny. So um, I think there's no loss there. The actual the challenge that we've got is is keeping the richness of the galaxy for the, the the vast amounts of things you can visit. My fear would be that there would be there would be no real change in doing that, even if we allowed it. So the, the simple answer is no, or at least not to start with. You know, uh, saying never is is, <laughs> is a long time, but certainly we have no plans to do that at the moment. I'm afraid. Okay, answering the next question, which is from Patrick underscore 68,000. Can't imagine where he got that, uh, where you got that number from. Will you be able to track and follow other commanders' hyperspace jumps? Well, yes, I think we've already said that a little bit. In the same way you did in uh, Frontier and in First Encounters, you'll be able to... We have several mechanisms. What we're trying to do is bring players together. So absolutely, it's something you can do. But whether you're travelling with a colleague, uh, and there will even be a benefit to essentially slipstreaming through a hyperspace uh, jump with another player in that you won't have to spin up your drive in quite the same way as, as the first guy did. Um, we're trying to balance it so that it's not really frustrating. Hyperspace is still a way out of combat, but if, if the following player wants to take a bit of a risk, they can jump into the unknown and, and uh, follow someone. So I think there's, there's a lot of richness in terms of gameplay that can result from this and also in terms of sort of combat on the on the hoof if you like where you're actually traveling chasing someone especially if if it's the reason you're chasing them is not just a sort of a random encounter but because maybe you're trying to assassinate them or or someone a passenger they're carrying so um Yes, you can, and it will be very. There will, there will be rich things to it. You may have to buy an add-on to make it possible, but yes, we will be doing that sort of thing. So, next question is from Marcus. What difficulties has the team found in updating the visual design of the classic elite ships? So, with the newsletters, we've been covering this a little bit. Um, we've seen some imagery of the Cobra, uh, of the Sidewinder. We've also seen the Viper Mark II. So that's all, um, all moving forward. It's been a challenge because essentially the ships in the previous games were carved from blocks of cheese 
with relatively little surface detail. Some surface detail was introduced in Frontier, further surface detail in uh, um, first encounters where we saw things like undercarriages and all that sort of thing. We're adding a lot more and we're also understanding the function of it, you know, like how do you, how do you fill up with fuel, where are all the thrusters. And I think this is made, hopefully with the imagery you've seen of the Sidewinder, um, has made the ships feel a lot more solid. You see how you get in and out, you see where the hatches are, ladders, all of this sort of thing. Um, and to me, it really makes them feel real, real. When we're designing the ships, we're also designing the interiors, so we know how big they are, we know where you sit when you're flying it. Um, all of those sort of things, we know where the cargo goes, so that we can ultimately show how the cargo is loaded and unloaded. So it brings a richness to it that embraces the ships as they were before, and we'll have some new ship designs as well, um, some of which we've already hinted at. Um, but it also makes it feel real, you know, that some of the video we've released of the Anaconda, you could imagine walking around that, even a very, very badly damaged one that you, you saw in the, the, the salvage video that we released during the Kickstarter campaign. So I think we're preserving the feel of the original ships and with some more designs that you'll see to come in the next few weeks, you'll see that uh, again as, as we show both small ships and large ships. Um, but also it, it fits with the spirit of the original ship and I think that's what's really important. All of the ships should be immediately recognisable. You think, oh I see, oh that's what all of that detail meant. So that's all to come So, and we're obviously very, very excited about it. Okay, final question is from Windle. That's spelled W-I-N-D-L. Um, I hope that's how you're supposed to pronounce it. Will it be possible to dock with capital stroke motherships? So, um, the answer is yes. So the idea, and just to sort of expand a little bit on it, um, we will have various kinds of um, capital ships, both uh, giant freighters and also military ships. Um, each of these, they won't necessarily have the full function of a space station. The, the, um, with most of them, there won't be artificial gravity inside. Um, which obviously won't affect us to start with, but you will be able to dock with them, you will be able to repair your ship, refuel, and probably a few other things depending on the type of the ship. You will also be able to dock with shipyards, which will be separate from the space stations, and they will each have different functions. Um, you know, you might be able to trade, but in a very restricted way, for example. So we're also planning ship-to-ship -ship docking, which will be very, very simple, where you can exchange um, goods so yes we're planning for all of this but it won't necessarily it won't have the same um, you know the, the, the breadth of what you can do when you dock with a normal space station so yes we're planning that yes um, there will be a lot of things you can do um, and all of that will bring a lot of richness to the game so there we go so thank you very much for listening to this the, uh, the second of the full development uh, dev diaries uh, and look forward to speaking to you again soon thank you